Hey, welcome back to another edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we're going to dive a little deeper into the numbers between two engines that are found in the Matrix chassis, the 650 and 850 Patriot mills. Plus, we're going to catch up with our mountain guys to talk about Skidoo's new turbo mountain sled. And speaking of Skidoo, I've got the new MXZ XRS 850 with me here in the studio to give it an afterburn treatment. So let's get this show started right now. Brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. On a recent episode of STV, Rich and I took out a pair of Polaris Matrix sleds, one 650 and one 850, to get a real-world handle on how these sleds compared to one another. Now, it's obvious that the 850 is going to be faster than the 650, which it is, hands down. But the question is, by how much? So to answer that, we took both of the sleds out to the ice and ran them on the radar gun. But before we get to that part of the story, I want to take a minute and look back at how these two sleds compared to one another on the trails. To begin with, we rode 340 kilometers in all types of conditions and from day into night, which gave us a pretty good idea how these sleds compare to one another, but also what the new Matrix chassis is like on the trails. We rode each of these sleds last spring back at Snowshoe, and as great as that event is, our ride time on the new units is somewhat limited, and it's easy to miss quirks and details of a machine. You know the ones you only find out after a really big long ride day? So with 340 kilometers of trail underneath the skis now, some of the details we learned at Snowshoot were confirmed, but we also found out a couple more as well. On each Matrix chassis, both Rich and I were very impressed with the wind protection for the rider. This was a definite goal for Polaris when they designed the new bodywork, and there's no question that they succeeded. I was even able to ride for a few minutes without any gloves on. I could really feel the dead air behind the windshield, and at 50 kilometers an hour, I could feel very little air over my hands on the bars either. In addition, the 850 had the VR1 package, which is a real handy device to have on the trail system. This technology isn't new for Polaris, but as we get better at operating the technology, the better it integrates into the ride experience, and it's definitely worth the investment compared to the Launch Edition 650 we had. But if you do decide to go with the VR1 package and the 7S display, do yourself a favor and really learn all the functionality the system has. You won't be disappointed. The VR1 option also gets you temperature controlled hand grips. Now this is technology exclusive to Polaris and basically it works by allowing you to set them to the temperature you want and the hand grips will stay there all day long. And it's another great reason to order the VR1 package over the launch edition. Now one thing I didn't like about either one of these sleds when it comes to the handlebars is the high low beam headlight switch. The new slick switch gear on the left side handlebar integrates the high beam switch into the block instead of being a separate switch like on the old models. This makes it a little hard to find with glove thumbs when you want to switch quickly from high to low or back again. Now this is a super nitpicky detail and one that you might get used to over time, but for me, I think I really like the design of the old chunky switch better, the one that was blue and underneath the handlebar itself. Now this is one detail that we did miss at Snowshoe because there we only ride during the daylight. Just shows you that there's no replacement for saddle time. And speaking of saddle, over the 340 kilometer ride, Rich felt more at home in the new narrower saddle than I did. I did like the narrowness in the transition area from the seat to the tank, but didn't really like the way my shins fit up against the side pods. It put my busted up old knees in an awkward position where on the old Axis chassis, I had a more square on side pod to hold my shins and knees into. Now these issues are my own and for a lot of you probably non-issues. Now at the end of the day, details aside, the new Matrix chassis in either the V1R or the Launch Edition is a step ahead of the Axis in every way which is exactly what Polaris was going for. For me, I can't wait to throw down another 340 kilometer day on either one of these sleds. So with the chassis stuff out of the way, it's time to talk about power, baby. On the trails, both of these sleds will smash any speed limit within seconds of pulling the trigger, but each engine is a completely different ride experience. 
So let's get this one thing out of the way right now. There is no way the 650 is going to keep up with the 850. Whether it's from a dead stop or a roll on, the 850 walks and then runs away from the 650. <laughs> I mean, there is no reality where the 650 has a hope against the 850. On the trail, this translates into a ride experience where the 650 is actually a bit more friendly. It's still fast, but because it doesn't hit as hard as the 850 anywhere in the power band, the smaller engine seems to flow better without the violence the 850 brings to the party. The 650 is also smoother with almost no vibration into the handlebars at trail speeds, and it always consumed a little less fuel at each gas stop. This engine is still very sporty and all but the most performance oriented hardcore rider will be extremely happy with it. The 850 is the Mr. Hyde compared to the 650's Dr. Jekyll. Now, this sled will build speed out of the corner blisteringly fast and will do it with horror film type attitude. Now, I'm not saying this is a sled that wants to hurt you as a rider. I'm just saying that this Mr. Hyde, it's not a character that's going to fit in a Hugh Grant movie. The 850 will pull the skis off the ground and it will spin the track and it will test your skills as a rider. All good stuff in my opinion, but it's a combination that demands respect when ridden and isn't for amateurs. Now we didn't go full hooligan on the trail to test out the all out performance differences between these two engines. Instead, we went to Kevlar Lake to stretch the belts on the ice where we were free from the constraints of speed limits and the radar gun backed up our performance predictions. But the numbers we got shouldn't be quoted as the absolute speed numbers for either one of these machines. They were what the radar gun told us, but it only represents a moment in time when we were testing on the ice given the conditions. If the conditions were faster, I'm sure the speeds would have also been faster, but the difference in speed between the 650 and 850 would have still been there. We started on the ice track where each sled struggled with traction off the line and for most of the run despite the sleds being equipped with ice ripper tracks. Limited by traction, the two sleds left pretty close to one another, which was the closest the 650 ever came to keeping up with the 850. After about 100 meters though, the 850 was gone. We also ran the sleds individually on the radar run where the lack of traction was still an issue, but the 850 pulled an impressive 93 miles an hour and the 650 topped out at 86 miles an hour. And just to get in front of the comments, we also ran the sleds again individually on the ice where we had a packed down track to run on and the results were 95 miles an hour for the 850 and 82 for the 650, which was a little bit slower. Overall, not too bad, but even in the runs we did off camera, the 850 dominated the 650 every time. It was never even close. Both these sleds would probably go faster depending on conditions, but each sled was completely stocked the way we took delivery and you shouldn't quote these numbers as absolute. It's just what we achieved on this day. But regardless of the top speeds, there is absolutely no way the 650 is ever going to run down an 850. But really, how relevant are those top speeds? At the end of the day, both of these engines are excellent pieces of engineering that will satisfy anybody's reasonable expectation of performance. Now, I'm not going to call out one engine being better than the other because they're just too different. These things are like apples and oranges. Instead, I'm going to wrap up the comparison like this, and I'm going to say it doesn't matter which engine you put in the Matrix chassis, you are going to be happy with the performance. All you got to do is figure out if you want the ultimate in performance, you need an 850. If you want great performance, but just don't have to be the first one across the lake each time, then the 650 might be the one. You know, it's funny. Um, I could have simplified that last five, eight minutes of TV by showing absolutely nothing and then just saying there's no replacement for displacement. STV is brought to you by Motovan for the love of power sports. There's something about Skidoo snowmobiles that make them stand out from all the other brands. Now, I don't know if that's their French Canadian influence on their design or the European influence on their engines or just the fact that Skidoo pretty much invented this whole industry. Whatever it is, there's no denying that BRP can make a heck of a snowmobile. So for this round in Afterburn, we're going to look at one of their best, the 2021 MXZ XRS 850. I don't feel jealousy, I don't feel envy, this is normally more unhealthy for me. Cool, 
This sled is Skidoo's heavy hitter when it comes to trail sleds. Not only capable of taking on the challenges of performance trail riding, but also the punishment of cross-country ditch banging. The XRS is basically the closest thing to a snowcross sled you can buy from the dealership and has all the good bits attached to the Gen 4 chassis. Out front is the Raz X front suspension that's been around for a couple of years now, but there's a few things different for 2021. On the XRS, you get 10 millimeters more shock travel for even more compliance. Then there's the new redesign of the Pilot X skis and the KYB shocks are compression adjustable only. What's totally new is the rear skid, now called the R-Motion X, which brings more travel and more adjustability to the party, and most importantly, more control over your ride. A lot of the magic happening in here has to do with the longer front and rear arms. The front arm is now 31 millimeters longer, and the mounting position on the rail is seven millimeters higher. This flattens the arm out compared to the chassis, resulting in less ski lift under acceleration. It's also adjustable up and down here by moving this fastener. In the high position, this bar is much flatter in the chassis, which puts more weight on the front skis. By moving it, it's gonna allow that front end to come up a lot easier for riders who wanna spend time going through the rough stuff. And then moving back, this is all new, from the rails to the tires to the rear arm that's 40 millimeters longer and has one more inch of suspension travel. Plus, all of this is optimized for weight and to work with 129 inch track length. I'm getting pretty techy on this skid, but my inner suspension geek is totally tweaking out on it. Riding the sled with the new suspension is noticeably better than the previous R-Motion and can absolutely make you faster in any condition. However, with the mechanical adjustability and the shock adjustments that can be made, you need to be a bit of a suspension geek to tune it to your personal perfection. This whole sled is a serious piece for serious riders. Expect to spend some time fiddling with the suspension adjustments available to you. And if you do, you can expect to be rewarded with one of the best handling snowmobiles you can buy. Now, if you're the type of rider who doesn't appreciate this level of adjustability and sophistication, maybe your best bet is another platform. In addition, the XRS is the beefed up version of the X package, which still has the R-Motion X rear suspension. Compared to the X, the XRS has more front suspension travel and bigger, stiffer KYB shock absorbers all around. Pro 36 is out front and Pro 40s in both ends of the rear skid. The shock package is the main difference between the X and the XRS, and which is the thing you need to be thinking about when choosing between these two models. Essentially, the XRS takes it all up to number 11, which is great for some riders, but others might find it a little harsh on the trails to ride. And that's because basically the tuning package on the suspension for the XRS allows you to jump a house. So if you're not into that level of excitement, maybe the MXZX is a better option for you. By the way, it's still a heck of a snowmobile. Three, Three four, four. These MXZs are available in either a potent little 600R or 850 model like this one. When left to choose around here, we'll pretty much always opt for displacement, so the 850 was the natural choice. This engine pairs to this chassis like a fine wine with a bourgeois meal. Equipped with a P-drive clutch, back shifts are instantaneous at slower speeds and only seem to mellow out as speeds increase above 70 miles an hour. Finessing the engine and drive package at slow speeds does take a little bit of getting used to with this thing, but then again, so does riding it. And that's because not only is this sled unique in the industry, its riding style is also unique as well. This sled puts you very far forward on the chassis, with the XRS a little further forward than the MXZs because the steering post is moved forward on this model as well. All this makes you ride the Skidoo brand just a little bit differently than the others. This machine makes you want your body position to move forward over top of the spindles to really make it dance in the corners. But once you've got that figured out, boy does she two-step. The MXZ is one of the most precise sleds on the snow and feels very planted and sure-footed. Inside ski lift though is almost too little at times and if you're not on top of your setup, the sled starts to develop a little understeer in the corners. Besides that, this machine will take all the abuse you can throw at it with a suspension a mile deep to take the hits.
switching gears here, I wanted to talk about what this sled looks like, which is pretty cool with the liquid titanium and red lava coloration. But there is one thing missing and it's approximately right here. That's right, there is no windshield, which is pretty cool, but it's also pretty cold. Now, any proper XRS rider would be totally fine with being cold like this, but if you don't feel like riding like Iron Man at minus 20, maybe a trip through the BRP parts and accessories catalog for a windshield might be a good idea. Other details on this machine is the quick adjust system that allows you to make key tuning changes to the rear slide without getting under your sled. And it has the Ice Ripper XT track. Now all these items can be specially ordered in the spring, but what's missing here is the adjustable TX ski package compared to the Pilot X ski, both of which have been redesigned for 2021. Additionally, this sled has the normal gauge package compared to the panoramic 7.8 inch wide color display. The new dash is actually something I wish we had. As we're getting more accustomed to the connectivity these displays give to the rider, the more you miss it when it's not there. Overall, the Skidoo MXZ XRS will over deliver on the expectations of any rider who chooses to bring this bad boy home, which is exactly what I'm going to do the second that that camera turns off. Closed captioning is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. All right, guys, we're here at Snowshoot. We've got our two mountain guys with us. We got Tyler and Jordan, and uh, we're going to talk to you about turbos right now. So, guys, uh, last couple of days you've been had your first experience riding the Skidoo Turbo 850. The big question I got, and I'm, we have you guys here to ride this stuff in the mountains because you know I just don't have the skills to do it, and you guys are our mountain guys. And I guess the big question on everybody's mind is. Does the turbo make a difference compared to a normal 850? I mean, we've got a backcountry back there, but it's a non-turbo one. Is the turbo, you know, can you feel it? Oh man, it makes a huge difference. Like when this thing first was released, uh, you know, we were all blown away that we finally have a factory turbo. And uh, I was excited. And then until I heard that it makes 165 horsepower and I was like, oh man, like that's not much boost or anything. And uh, then I came out here and I rode it and 165 horsepower at elevation is pretty wicked it's yeah we're about 7,000 feet up yeah here. so this thing is perfect I mean all the other 850s we've ridden in comparison to this it's like the 850 is like an, a 600 you know um, so that boost it really pulls hard and uh, really great throttle response you yeah. know no no lag at all I mean and I think too for horsepower difference from a non turbo or an NA 850 yeah. um, what do they talk about about 40 horsepower difference at roughly the elevation we're at now right so yeah I mean that's that's a big difference when you're when you're needed in the, right. in the mountains oh, yeah. Yeah. noticeable for sure so now this one is the 175 so this is sort of a newer release the turbo we've known about it for a while now but uh, I think this sled is a little bit uh, a little bit more recent so what's what's this thing like to ride it's it's kind of long we're in some hard snow here uh but uh if you got this thing in the deep snow you know three four feet of powder you're going to be the first one to the top of the hill every time you know uh this thing is just born for the trees as far as well obviously the footprint on it but the the delivery of the boost it's incredible it's uh perfect for the trees because on modified you know aftermarket turbos they have a little bit of lag yeah uh, but this thing is right there all the time whenever you want it just grab a handful yeah. Now, this is the 175, um, but you guys have also ridden some of the other 850 turbo sleds. So, you know, maybe talk about that uh, with, with something that's not quite as aggressive on the track length, you know, is it, like the free ride, is it still uh, the turbo, is it appropriate for that sled too? I would say, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's a great addition to the free ride as well. Um, thing just rips, man. Um, it's pretty awesome. And tail standards for days and uh, just really responsive. It's, it's uh, everything you could ask for. Now home for you guys is Idaho, so you know is this going to work for uh, for your terrain, like, uh, or is it you know is it a pretty broad spectrum of where the, the turbos in general is this uh, you know something that's going to resonate? I think with you know with you guys and your riding buddies. Yep, I I thought at first like I was mentioning the horsepower at elevation, so where home is for us, we ride at like three to five thousand feet. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's not going to be that much of a difference, but after riding it up here, I know even down at that lower elevation, it'll still be a huge uh, huge gain for sure. So. Uh, I, I would love to get on one of these next year. I'm going to have to see about financing one of these and <laughs> get it in my stable, you know? So uh, to wrap up uh, kind of the first burn after, you know, a couple of days on the turbo, uh, any final words on, uh, on this machine, how well it works or the turbo, how well it works? Well, <clears throat> besides, you know, performance, like we've talked about, uh, you guys will see in some Skidoo advertisements, uh, the placement of the turbo. 
Uh, they put it pretty centralized uh, to the motor, to the yeah. center of the chassis. Yeah, it's, it's right on top. Here. Yeah, so you don't have I'm any- getting the heat out of it right now. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have all that added weight out to the side and down low. Um, it's being centered like that. It didn't change the feel of the sled, which is huge. You know, that's important to make such a big upgrade and not change any handling rather, so. So all in all, Skidoo's got a hit with the turbo? Oh man. Yes, sir. They got some, uh, you know, the other brands, they've got some competition now, so they better <laughs> step it up, that's for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for riding with us, guys. Thanks, bud. STV's Pro Tip of the Day is brought to you by Yamaha. For today's Yamaha Pro Tip, it's all about checking the tension on your track, which you should be doing from time to time. Now, the first thing is to go online and figure out what the specifications are for your particular sled. On this Polaris, it's calling for one inch of clearance with a 10 pound push, 16 inches ahead of the rear axle. Now you can do this a couple of ways. Tape measure, 10 pound weight, or just pushing down is a good way, or the more pro way of doing it, is to pick yourself up a track tensioning tool. I got this one from Woody's. It's pretty cool because on the bottom there's an O-ring that you can set to the depth you want, in this case about an inch, and on the top there's another O-ring that as you push it down will register how much weight you've been pushing down on. Just set that to zero before you start the job. Now you put this on the inside of the track, about 16 inches ahead of that axle, push down, sight underneath the high fax so that that bottom O-ring is equal, and then you can read how much pressure it took. This case, 11 pounds. So we're right within spec. Hey, thanks for tuning in to STV once again this week. Now, if you get a chance, why don't you check out our YouTube channel for not only this show, but also hundreds of other videos. Now, till next time, ride safe out there. STV is brought to you by CKX, wear your passion. Schaefer's. Specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 